People don't realize taxes are their biggest expense every year. There's a lot of money being left on the table. It's potentially the most complex thing that any of us have to do every year as consumers. We shouldn't all have to become tax experts to just do our civic <laughs> duties. Keeper is the world's first AI-based tax software. This is Paul Kulik, and today I'm challenging him to a little puzzle building competition. It's a music okay. box. I'm gonna look like that. Good? Sure. So why taxes? Like, why was this the move for you? I had previously built another company in the space and my folks are from the Soviet Union and one of the sayings in, in that environment was that the only people who can, who pay all their taxes are the ones who can't afford to. It's a little bit tongue in cheek, but the, the point is that at least in the Soviet Union, the tax law was so ridiculous. It was so like, you were supposed to pay so much uh, this and that. And if you actually did all of that, you couldn't, you, didn't, you would have nothing left. While I don't think that's the case in the States, I do think there are parallels of that. I think unfortunately, if you can't afford or don't wanna pay for you know, a, a great personal accountant, you sometimes pay even more for that you know, because you didn't, you didn't do that. Right. And, and that. And that's kind of the paradox um, that I think we live in and, and one of the reasons I wanted to start Keeper. It's cool that you're from the Soviet Union. Did you grow up here or? I, I grew up all over the world. I was born in Japan. I lived in the Netherlands. Uh, and then when I was 11, my family moved to, to the States. What's been your favorite spot that you've lived? No, I mean, I, I love America. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I am American at the end of the day. And that's what yeah. I love about America is that you can be American even though you didn't, you weren't born here. So walk me through how the Keeper app works because I know that it will look for deductions for you. The experience is that you sign up and you link your bank account and then Keeper will scan through the past 18 months of your transaction history. Okay. So the, you know, you tell us a little bit about yourself. Let's say you're a real estate agent. And we will automatically go through and identify all the possible tax deductible expenses that you had over the course of the last year. That's amazing. And the end result is that we just show you, we just show you 45 seconds later, here is on average, we find about $1,200 worth of write-offs. Uh, this is, you know, here's, here's like all the write-offs we found. And then you can go in and add others if you want. And then that just gets added to your refund. And so the reason that's really valuable is because a lot of folks, because of the complexity of that system, a lot of folks just end up claiming nothing. Right. And our so our stance at Keeper is we needed to make it as easy as possible and as fun as possible to actually do this thing because otherwise no one's gonna do it. The service works for anyone, you know, basically 99% of cases we can file your taxes. Okay. But the part that is actually magical is if you have what is called uh, 1099 contracting income. So mm -hmm. if you're a freelancer, or you're a gig worker, uh, you have a side hustle. That's where the product really shines. Yeah. Right. Wait, each of these needs to be removed? You, you already did that? <laughs> That's what you started with? <laughs> You're like, yes. I think it helps that I have nails. Maybe you can use this. This might help you. Oh, <laughs> like that's pop out smart. the little pieces. Look at that. There are a ton of deductions. Yeah. What would you say is the most common one that people tend to overlook? There's basically no job you can do in modern life that doesn't involve your phone. And so this is, I mean, certainly it's true if you drive for Uber, uh, but it's also true if you're, uh, you know, if you sell stuff online, like you need your phone to fulfill customer requests or answer questions or whatever. You're you're using apps all the time, and so part of your phone bill is a tax deductible expense. You know, you can just add up the 12 payments, let's say you pay 50 bucks a month, $600, and let's say your effective, effective tax rate is 30%, you know, you're 200, $200 worth of free money. Just like, right. just like that's, all, that's all it is. Claim your phone bill, get $200. It's that easy, and so many people don't do it. Very passionate about it too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you're working hard. It's not an easy job. You don't, you know, you're not making a ton of money. So just because you're not like a, sort of traditional business owner with like all these other things doesn't mean you can't claim these deductions. So. Absolutely. Hey, Am what's... I done? Are you this is pretty good looking. I, I'm pretty happy with my box here. I think I'm also doing it wrong to be fair. Can I? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, Okay, all right. So it's just not symmetric is what it is. Yeah, I don't think How so. How do you feel about that? I mean. Oh, it, yours is symmetric. I see. Oh, I am doing it. Oh my gosh, am I a you're, closet puzzle? You're doing it pro? right. Yeah. Is there anything in the tax space that you think people should do before the end of the year to get themselves ready for an upcoming tax season? Should is a funny word, right? <laughs> if I was an accountant or if I practiced the old school way of talking about taxes, I would tell you, you should get your books in order. You should pay your quarterly taxes by, you know, September 15th. A bunch of different things that you should do. You right. know, finger wagging style should. I don't want to live in that world. I guess like, yeah. <laughs> ultimately I don't, I think you should spend time with your kids and do the things you love. And so I, I, sort of rebel against that notion of, of sort of finger wagging should. Maybe if you have an S corporation and you need to file your tax return for that, fine. But if you're just a regular consumer with some freelance income on the side, 
Um, you're good. Yeah. 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 We can. No need to stress about taxes <laughs> just yet. Yeah. Can I borrow this? Please take whatever you need. Okay. You're also not centered. So oh. I guess we're just not centering. There's a lot of similar pieces that are different sizes. So I'm like, is this right? Am I using the right size of this thing? I don't know. Are there tax situations that you think um, folks should, where you were like, eh, maybe you should go and talk to someone <laughs> about this sort of tax situation? Is there anything that comes to mind where you would tend to recommend someone go to a pro to get it done? Yeah, um, certainly. Uh, you know, by no means are we trying to replace all accountants or, you know, right. I think AI is gonna do a lot, but it's gonna take years before you know, people don't need an account if ever. Yeah. So I, I think that if you are someone, basically you'll know. Like yeah. if you have an S corporation, <laughs> if you have, you know, uh, estate taxes, like yeah, get an accountant. Yeah. Uh, well, I think the AI sort of intelligent software wave is gonna start bottoms up. Like we, we, you have to, you have to start with the simpler stuff. And so right now with Keeper, it's really good for business income, but we do, we're not like super great at, um, the state taxes or, or, you know, property management or things like that. Yeah. So, yeah, so there, you know, it's gonna take time. Yeah, absolutely. I have a trick that I'm willing to share with you. One of these is shorter than the other, you'll notice. Like, see how this is longer? Oh. That's my inside. Okay. Yeah. I think your, is yours upside down? Wait, um, yeah, because this has to be on the back, you're right. Okay. Yeah. I think it's still good to understand your own personal financial situation as much as you can so that you can go in there and say, I kind of heard about this deduction, I might well, yeah, that's order. right. That's right. Actually, that's uh, that's really important. Unfortunately, there's this authority complex that happens when people go to an accountant, and they just you know it's like, well, they're the expert, and I'm just a regular person, and so they don't push back. Right. And unfortunately, so many accountants are needlessly conservative or just wrong. You know, they're they're human too, and they don't necessarily deal with cases like yours every day. And so that is the one thing that I will push on with friends where they'll go to an accountant and they'll say, oh, but my accountant said I need, you know, paper receipts for every one of these things and that like I shouldn't claim, uh, you know, this business meal. And I'm like, your accountant has no skin in the game. It's not their refund that they're managing. Right. And, and they've, and you know, the IRS is very strict, very clear <laughs> about these things. And like, so you need to be careful about the sort of advice you trust and, and don't. And that goes the other way too, obviously. You'll have accountants who are a little too pushy on some of these deductions. So I do think that there's a a little bit of a trap with the human services model where if you don't have a great accountant, you, it's hard to know if you have a great accountant and if you don't, they might actually do more harm than good. Okay, look. Okay, did you do did it I right do though? Wrong? Oh no, I probably you not. You didn't add the acrylic piece. Acrylic? Is that this? Because it, I guess, I threw that out thinking it was a... Oh, I think you need that. So before <laughs> starting Keeper, <laughs> mm -hmm. you worked for another successful tax company, what made you feel like it was a good time for you to kind of branch out on your own and do your own thing? Cause that's totally scary, but you did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it wasn't my first attempt to okay. branch out and do my own thing. I had already done it. I already already quit my job and said, that's it. I'm going, I'm quitting. I don't You're have an idea. In. I don't have a co-founder. And I did that once. And then I, you know, I sort of watched my bank account. Mm. <laughs> I watched it go down and I was like, I see where the line is <laughs> yeah. headed. And I rejoined, I, I, I went back into the workforce. Okay. And you know, at the time it felt like a huge failure. I felt like, well, you know, what kind of entrepreneur am I? I couldn't even hold out for more than three months. And maybe that's true. But the second time around, when I actually started Keeper, I sort of came in with more realistic expectations. Yeah. By the time I actually started Keeper and quit my job, we had customers, we had, mm. I was working, you know, basically, I would finish at five uh, for my regular job and I would work till nine every day and, and both both weekends days. So it was like, you know, I was I was in it. I was yeah. doing essentially two jobs for about nine months. Okay. And so it wasn't, you know, I think there is this tendency when you when something is big and scary and you don't know how to deal with it, there's this tendency, at least in me, to just throw caution to the wind and say, well, <laughs> I can't figure this part out, so let's, let me just figure nothing out. Yeah. And I think the second time around, I was a little smarter about it. Uh, yeah. And yeah, and I think without that, I probably wouldn't have sort of had the confidence to keep going early on. Like, I, I don't know, my, my little acrylic piece fell out. What? I know. How did you get your sides on so fast? But uh, the thing is, I'm gonna just, I'm just fine with it. Yeah, oh, just I'm just gonna let it. it be. It has character. It's pretty good. What do you think has been your biggest challenge so far with Keeper? Yeah, so Keeper is a venture-backed company. You are not building a regular business. Sure. You are not building a 
kind of like 20% year over year growth is not good enough. <laughs> yeah. Like there's no world in which you can just like rest on your laurels and say, this is working. Like it needs to work to the degree that Facebook and Instagram worked or it doesn't matter, Yeah. you know? It, it, and so I think that's a very high bar. And I think one of the challenges with tax, trying to do that with tax software is that uh, you don't have some kind of like viral social component to it. And you're competing with cat videos and with like, people dancing and just like things that are way more fun than taxes, you have to deliver value. And if you deliver enough value, then maybe people will talk about it with their friends. And we, I think we finally reached that point where we're starting to get some of that network effect, but it took so long and it was so hard to get there uh, because I don't think people are naturally excited to like, be like, oh my God, I found the best tax app, right? right? It's not, and so, and that's what it takes to really get that kind of exponential growth. Success is not just helping people who would have used a spreadsheet anyway. Right. Success is helping people who would have used nothing. <laughs> and that's really hard. Wow, that's cool. I mean, I hear rattling inside, which is probably not great, but. It I makes mean, you can music. do that too. Yeah. <laughs> it's making music, that's the main thing, yeah. right? So what is next for Keeper? Basically what you're gonna experience this year with tax filing is much more analogous to what you get from a human accountant with our software, where you go in and you drop off all your forms, you connect your bank account, and then we, do, we prepare your taxes for you, and then you kind of review it and sign off. Yeah. Which is very different than software has ever been able to be before right. because there's not like eight sections with seven subsections in every section. So it's a, it's a big deal. Um, it's something we're really excited about. And I think it's the future of how people should be filing their taxes. So if people are feeling curious about you or they just want to learn more, how can they find you? Keepertax.com. <laughs> I'm not like a social uh, a figure on, on social media or anything, so don't follow me. But uh, but yeah, Keepertax.com. We're going to help you with your taxes. Uh, there's a free trial. We make it really easy. So please check it out.